First of all, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon for this short preview of our new research uh, report, which we are publishing tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, and as you can see there, the hashtag PR in a pandemic suggests uh, pretty much what it's going to do, which is, uh, if you look at that little blurb underneath, explore the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the public relations profession. In particular, we're gonna be looking at actually what the experience of the last 18 months mean for the future of the profession by looking at practitioner experiences and their expectations as well. Um, before we start, by all means, please do share the fact that we're having this conversation today. That's absolutely fine. I'll just ask, um, we're publishing this tomorrow, it's under embargo. This is a member exclusive event, but if you could just try and, um, or please not share any of the data that you see in the forthcoming slides, that would be great. Uh, once the report is published tomorrow morning, then you are more than welcome to share any of the data that you see uh, and find. Uh, my colleague Liam will pop that into the chat as well. Um, we will, the, the report is an 80 page report. There is a huge amount of information and data in there. I'm not gonna take you through that uh, all today. You'll be pleased to hear, but we'll do some of the key highlights. Um, there will be time for some questions at the end as well. Um, a little bit of context. Mo most of you will be aware of the fact that each year we, uh, we survey the profession and we tend to publish that in a report called State of the Profession. We've done that for the last 10 years. Um, and it gives us insight and data which we can sort of track against previous years to see how the profession is progressing and changing. Um, due to the sort of seismic events of the last 18 months or so, it felt, first of all, inappropriate. Um, and second of all, not particularly um, useful to, to look at the sort of same kinds of trends and data that we tended to look at. So we've given this a bit of a, of a rebrand, but actually the focus this year is very much different as well. Um, so here is some of the key stats, um, which I hope you'll be able to see. Um, we had just under 1400 responses, just to give you a bit of an idea with this profession this size based in the UK, we're looking at around 900 to make sure that we're representative of the profession. So you can be confident that the data that we're seeing is fairly representative. The survey itself was open for just under a month um, and we've complemented it this year with 10 qualitative interviews. So you'll see in the report tomorrow, various, um, quotes scattered throughout the report from people to give a bit of context to some of the data that we've actually seen. And you'll see it explores uh, the impact of the pandemic on, on, a, range of, uh, on a range of issues, um, on income, business performance, industry reputation, individual role, well-being, and plenty more. And what I think it does differently to any report that I've seen anyway, is that it actually looks at how the experiences over the last 18 months have been uh, felt by different um, practitioners across organisation types, different levels of seniority, age and role. So what we try to do is pick out some key themes from those answers, but actually look at some of the differences in the experiences that have been felt by those practitioners. We found, well, five sort of key themes in a one, um, one sort of interesting uh, area to, to focus on. These are the six areas that we're actually um, using as the exact summary in the report itself. And you can see them here, they'll read them out for you. A rocket in reputation and influence, the year of change, the uneven impact of COVID-19, working out with mental health and wellbeing, the toll on public sector employees, and finally, a future shaped by recent past. For the new people who've just joined us, thank you very much for joining. We, we just ask that you don't um, screenshot any of the data that you're about to see. Uh, the report's out tomorrow morning, so you won't have too long to wait before you are able to share that. Um, do share the fact that we're having this conversation if you want, of course. <clears throat> so we're going to look at each of those six themes um, one by one with some of the, the data. As I said, it's an 80-page report, so we're not going to go through all of it today, but there's some key areas which we'll look at first. So firstly, the rocket in reputation and influence. This is the really big key theme that we found um, almost unanimously across the whole profession and there's a few graphs I'll show you here. So the one on the left, we actually asked people, first of all, whether they felt that the impact of the pandemic had had a positive, uh, an overall positive, overall negative, or sort of mixed um, impact on the profession. 40%, uh, which is the largest number of family that had a positive impact, I think 29% said negative. And if you look at that left-hand column there, that large blue box, that dark blue box, is the increased value and reputation when those people who were asked whether it was positive or negative, the people that said positive, we actually asked them what, uh, what actually the impact of that positivity has meant. Overwhelmingly, it has been the increase in value and reputation. 
when you look at the report tomorrow and you look at the negative column, you'll see that the colours are a lot more evenly matched. There's not one area in particular that falls out as being the standout one. I think the top one is the well-being of practitioners, and that's at 16%. So overwhelmingly, the increase in reputation and value of the profession that we feel is the big positive. And you can see here on the right hand side, those two sort of donuts actually have a kind of fairly um, similar um, sort of shape to them or sort of the same shape, the same sort of colour breakdown there, which is showing you that actually the majority of people, both in uh, consultancies and agencies on the left hand side and also in house, feel that there's been a big increase in the, uh, in the reputation that's been felt. So 56% increase with consultancy and agencies uh, and a 50% increase with in-house. Um, about a third on both of them say it stayed the same and then 7% on both actually say that there's been a slight decrease. So really a unanimous view irrespective of where you work or who you're working for that actually our value and our reputation has, uh, has, has been positively impacted uh, in the last 18 months. Lots more data on that in the report, but as I said, we're not going to do uh, show you all of it today. <coughs> a year of change. Um, it almost goes without saying, but what do we mean by that? Well, there's a huge amount of change, but in particular, this graph, oh, excuse me, I find has really shown that it's the very nature of the job itself which has changed. So this is the uh, a sort of bar chart of the activities that practitioners have spent the last 12 months doing. And if you look at the far right hand column there, you'll see those plus and minus signs and a few equal signs. What that has done is that's actually tracked the, uh, the number of activities and the, the kind of popularity or the commonly undertaken activities against the uh, report that we did pre-pandemic. Now, what you'll tend to see in reports is that you'll get maybe a movement of one or two, occasionally you'll get something bigger, but you wouldn't see the top three responses having plus four, plus seven and plus four bracket numbers next to them, the positions they were, that they were in in the previous year. So what you can see is that the very nature of the job, the activities that we do are significantly different to what we did pre-pandemic. So crisis and issues management, internal employee communications and community and stakeholder relations all have jumped up quite considerably from fifth, ninth and seventh places into one, two and three. Uh, and in their place, strategic planning, copywriting and editing and PR programs and campaigns have dropped. You'll also see some other sort of big shifts in there. And if you look sort of right towards the bottom, that third from the bottom, it's, it's no surprise to see events and conferences has fallen six places uh, for obvious reasons. So when you talk about a year of change, um, actually it's the very nature of the role. We're not doing the same stuff we were doing before. The uneven impact of COVID-19, again, um, it won't be much of a surprise to, to sort of uh, to, to sort of think about the fact that the pandemic has probably impacted people professionally in different ways. But when we look at what that means, there are some quite interesting areas here. So the first one here is income. And what you'll see here, the big orange block in the middle on the left hand side, there's three on the left hand side, which is the majority, that, that, that stayed the same. So from what you want to ideally see is either growth, which is the, the green and, and purple column on the bottom, or at least stay the same. And, and for in-house practitioners, both private, public and, and uh, not-for-profit NGOs, that has largely been the case with a few caveats. But when you look at consultancies and agencies, and particularly independent practitioners, you've got some real shifts. So what we're looking at here is not necessarily differences between the columns, but actually the differences within the columns themselves. So when you look at that independent practitioner bar, you've got half of practitioners who have experienced a, a significant decrease, uh, sorry, a, a significant or a, a slight decrease in their in their income. Um, again, for consultancies and agencies at the bottom there, you've got that sort of green and purple bar, which is, um, yeah, sort of a third or so, just over a third. Uh, and at the, uh, at the top, you've got those that have decreased. So you've got big differences within certain consultancies and agencies and big differences with independent practitioners. Uh, on the in-house teams, less of big differences, but still some considerable shifts at either end as well. What that means for business, well, sales pipeline during the pandemic stayed fairly strong. Again, if you look at the differences within the bars, you've got quite some consistent big sort of chunks of colour there, haven't you? So you've got sort of a third consultancies and agencies who have experienced a big increase, but also you've got 19% and 7% respectively who have seen some decreases as well. Again, independent practitioners, some of which have performed very well, many of which unfortunately have experienced a big decrease in their sort of, um, in their sort of future. Uh, business uh, opportunities that have come there. So again, it's those colours and that breakdown within the columns themselves, not necessarily the difference between each one. 
and team size as well. Again, you've seen big shifts um, in team sizes. So you've got the, the orange bar staying the same. <clears throat> you've got really big growth um, of team sizes in the in-house public sector, less so in the private sector and less so at consultancies and agencies. Um, and some rather worrying drops, particularly in uh, not-for-profit and NGO and even in-house private sector. So again, some organizations uh, growing their teams, many, many organizations, um, not, not so much. And then working hours, this is by gender, and um, it, it uh, is a, perhaps a bit of a surprise to see that, that women have been working longer hours than men. Um, so when you see that sort of green and purple uh, colors in, on the right-hand side, you've got pretty much two thirds of practitioners, female practitioners working longer hours than their male counterparts on the left-hand side, who actually did find themselves working longer hours, but just less so. And in fact, a bit of a bigger, bigger decrease as well on the, um, at the top there in those blue colors. Um, and as a result, perhaps men have found that their income has dropped slightly compared to, to their female counterparts. So for females, there's been uh, a consistent rise with male, but their finances and their income has largely stayed the same. Men have found that actually their income has um, largely stayed the same, but have seen bigger decreases as well. So again, some big differences there. Again, plenty more in the report, but we're not going to show all of it today. Um, working hours, mental health and well-being. I, I suspect not much of this is going to be a shock to many of us. Um, but when you look at working hours, um, it's the, the green and the purple um, columns within the uh, colours within the columns here, which shows just how significant an increase um, we felt across every single um, organisation type, although particularly in the house public sector, which has seen uh, you know, that 40% significant increase in working hours. The only sort of outlier here perhaps is independent practitioners who again have had that real mix of, uh, of those who have experienced large increases in their working hours and many have experienced um, uh, some, uh, some quite significant decreases as well. So we've seen a real shift. Um, I mean, they, those purple columns, uh, colours at the bottom of each column is, is you know, worryingly large for, for all organisations, even the 15% of independent practitioners. Um, and mental health, this is uh, by seniority. So on the left-hand side, you've got the more junior um, practitioners, those who work at intern, trainee, assistant, executive level. And on the right-hand side, you've got the most senior practitioners. And what you can see here again, almost unanimously there's been a, a rather worrying decrease in people's mental health that those, those blue colors the light blue and the dark blue colors show that that's the um the impact that the pandemic has had but i think interestingly here what you're seeing is the almost the first two columns as you go up the seniority ladder you see a um a, a sort of increase um in in those that have um actually found that the mental health impact has been perhaps less so than those of the, the sort of more junior level. So what we're seeing is uh, more junior practitioners and perhaps um, as a result, younger practitioners have had a, a bit more of an impact on their mental health than those in more senior positions. Um, we've already looked a little bit at public sector employees, but there's a reason for that, um, largely because many weren't able to actually access the furlough scheme. But you look here in that second column, um, the public sector just did not furlough most of their staff. They, many weren't able to, but even those that weren't, it, it wasn't huge. When you look at the other columns, almost half, but less um, or, or more, excuse me, half on each one was able was were furloughed in both the private sector in-house um, and those that work in NGOs and not-for-profits and consultancies and agencies. So the public sector um, found itself working longer hours um, and, um, and actually growing their teams as well. So what does this all mean for the future? Well, there's a lot of insight here. I mean, you remember that, uh, that sort of bar chart that we saw earlier on in terms of the activities that people have now found themselves doing, which showed that that shift from activities that was not happening so much before the pandemic, moving up to the top of what people are doing. What you're seeing is a prediction that actually a lot of those um, activities that have been less um, uh, sort of commonly undertaken in the last 18 months actually coming back up. So practitioners are predicting things are going to be returning largely to the way that uh, the, the way they were. Um, things are going to be almost going back to normal, if you like. This I find perhaps the most interesting graph of all. Um, this is the challenges. This is what keeps practitioners awake at night. So this is what's actually the result of what the pandemic has perhaps meant on um, the concerns of practitioners. And if you look on that far right hand side, 
or the NAs. These are concerns that just weren't concerns for practitioners before the pandemic at all. And you can see you've got almost with half a dozen or so there. So very, very new concerns coming in at, a, at the expense of those that, um, that were worrying before. So the big shift, if you look in the middle there, the underrepresentation of practitioners at board level, that was number one. Uh, a year ago, that's dropped 12 places, perhaps as a result of the fact that we feel that our reputation um, and our influence has now increased. The, the concerns um, that practitioners have just don't, don't sort of worry about uh, our, our sort of our position at, at a top table. In fact, now the, the big concerns are, are two very new ones, the mental health problems among practitioners, which we've already looked at, um, and then perhaps the recession or potential recession and the impact that will have on job losses. And that obviously depends on external factors and how the economy is going to perform. But again, some really big shifts that you just wouldn't have seen before, um, before the pandemic. So as I say, the, the change in nature of the role and the concerns that practitioners have have really been um, experienced quite significantly here. When you look at working hours, um, we've already seen a significant rise in what people have done. But when you ask people what they expect to do, quite a lot of practitioners expect working hours to increase compared to decrease. So the fact that we've seen this increase, the, the, the vast majority expect that to stay. That's the orange color in the middle of those columns. Um, those working hours are not going away anywhere, but actually, again, perhaps worryingly, a lot of those people perhaps see their working hours increasing even further. That's particularly true of the in-house private sector, less so of the public sector, but that's because their working hours increase so much that perhaps um, not enough hours in a day to actually find more of them. But again, across the whole board, working hours are set to increase. Independent practitioners as well, we're seeing more of those um, expecting decreases and also in the public sector, a few decreases as well. Um, and this is the reputation. We already said the reputation of the public relations in the last 18 months has experienced a, a massive rocket. We've seen a big shift in what, uh, in the influence and the reach that we've had within the organizations that we work for, and within the clients that we have. That's not going away anywhere anytime soon. Practitioners really see this either staying. Um, the impact of the last 18 months um, sees our reputation almost, you know, sort of cemented in that in place, but actually many see it increase as well. You look at those green and purple colors there, quite significant shifts and very, very few um, see it decrease. Again, in the kind of practitioners a little bit more than others, but very, very few indeed. So that concludes, um, that concludes a sort of whistle-stop tour of some of the key, um, some of the key findings.